You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, Envy left. So instead, we're going to have Jadena take his place. Absolutely. <laughs> I saw Envy in the lobby. I was like, yo, we ready? He's like, nah, man, I'm... Did all he, packed to go. Did he show you his shoes? He's been showing off these shoes. He's got like yeah, these Louboutins that? that are like all Sparkly glittered out. Yeah, I saw I saw them for like Can two you blocks help him away. With his dressing, please. <laughs> did you tell him they were tacky? He had, he had sparkles on his uh, pea coat. Yeah, you saw that. What How'd you like that? On? I mean, you know, he's uh, shiny. That's all I got. Like. I knew exactly where he was and where he was going. This is the most casual I've seen you probably ever. But really? Still very, it still looked like still a, you know, I got elegant. the French cuff still. Yeah. That, that looks yeah. like something you play basketball in. You got your Chuck Taylor's on. You got your... Like ABA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's nah. something you can't wear if you're at all overweight. Like that shirt. This? Every, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah, actually, it works for, I mean, this one is I tailored like to me. I feel like it looks good because it's very But nice. if you're a big man, you can still rock it. In Nigeria, they call it up and down. Okay. Up just and a, down? Yeah, just Why do they call it just that? Just up and down. You know, you okay. got your shirt and your pants. Usually they're the same, like, fabric. Um, but that's the style. It's a long shirt. I would expect you to have on mad layers, especially because it's wintertime. Like, <laughs> you got to have more. Where's the rest of the You know ensemble? what? I just came from L.A., so. Got you. Yeah, and I'm hit with, like, uh, remember the East Coast days? And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not prepared for this at all. So you were at the Grammys? Yeah. How is how did you feel about that? I know there's been a lot of controversy. We were talking about how the Grammys responded to the fact that Adele won over Beyonce for Album of the Year. Bunch of bunch of culturally clueless people. And they were basically saying that people have to vote. There's a lot of people that are able to vote, and they should exercise that power. And even Terrace Martin, who was nominated, said a lot of times he goes to these things and he doesn't see anybody like him there. And people really need to come out and support if yeah. they want to complain about it. Yeah, I think there's truth in that, for sure. Um, it's similar to any election process. Uh, Except for the President of the United States. That, yeah, that which, work out. <laughs> yeah, maybe the Russians had something to do with the Grammys, too. But, I mean, I think that it's just a, it's a tradition in the Grammy. I don't expect anything else. And also, I don't think that we should always hold this uh, award show as the achievement for mm -hmm. our music, even. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you don't have to always be justified or revered by that organization mm -hmm. and I, you know I'm good friends with people that are on the board but mm -hmm. I don't always look to that as like the highest regard in music even though most people do right you know so I you know I also will say that I didn't feel I don't know how y'all felt about Adele talking about her black friends yeah I, I, got, I got an opinion okay what do you, what do you feel um I felt like she missed a moment because uh, I feel like in moments like that, she should use her privilege to combat prejudice. So don't tell me about how Beyonce's music makes your black friends feel like they want to stand up for themselves. Tell me how Beyonce's music makes you feel like you want to stand up mm. for for us and, and women. Mm -hmm. You know? Actually, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. Did you feel offended by it, though? I'm not going to say offended. I don't think of, I didn't feel offended. I didn't either. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't either. Because I was talking to somebody, I was like, well, how else do you... If she's thinking about her black, black friends, friends, how yeah. else would you? You know what I mean? My right. friends of my black friends have a different complexion than I have. My colored yeah, yeah. friends, yeah. <laughs> my African American my friends. Negro but friends. It's true that, that it is true that black women do have a different struggle than white women. Yeah, but well, she didn't say women. She didn't make a gender specific. I know, but I, I, I mean, she said her black friends. I, I think that she just wasn't prepared to say what she had to say, so she didn't think it out and she just said it like. I yeah. feel like she wanted to say something else, right? But she and, second guessed herself and it came out crazy. Like or, sometimes. or maybe she didn't second guess her, herself and it came out crazy. Mm. But I mean, either way, I think that it was meant to be heartfelt. And I do think from just judging from Beyonce's eyes and how she was looking, I think I hope that she felt the 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 intention behind it. Yeah. Right. You know I think Beyonce did. She, yeah, it looked like it. It's funny because Beyonce never comments on these things. Like you'll never hear Beyonce be like, "Listen, everybody, take it easy." Like she just. She don't have to. We yeah. speak for her. And she's on to <laughs> <laughs> the beehive is That's here. True. In effect. And I she's on to the next one, man. She's just moving on, man. So listen, why do people go to those awards though? Because like you said, we don't seek validation from those people. Like you go to every award show. I see you at NAACP awards. I'm just BT. going to stunt, man. I'm not, you know, you know where I'm going. I got man. an album out to, today. I got a clock yeah, full of I, I didn't say my. I promoted my album on the entire red carpet. Yo. I didn't even know who was performing. Um, why do we go? You know, I, I think again, this tradition, right? Mm -hmm. We just keep where we're. we're uh, habitual people so that we we form these habits and just keep going but I, I i really think that if we really have a issue with it mm -hmm. then we should make an award show that is equally as uh valued but values the music that we think should be valued more 
But value comes from us, though. Like, we, like, like we do exactly. have award yeah. shows now. Yeah, we got BT award show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have hip hop awards. We got a gang of awards. Uh, Soul Train. Right. Soul Train was probably the closest thing growing up mm-hmm. to the Grammys and my because I would see Michael Jackson on Soul Train. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. be like, yeah, one day I'll be there, you know. So, right. I, I mean, I think it's uh, it's something that we have to stop have just to complaining about and and actually just make it happen. Right. And I mean, the thing about the Grammys is, though, once you win a Grammy or you perform at the Grammys, it does affect your sales yeah, and your streaming a lot. It does. It does. You know, like even with Tribe Called Quest, the song they performed, I think they said like the streaming went up 400 percent. We the people. Of that yeah. song. Yeah. We the people. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now, the album's finally coming out. Yes. I, yes I, I, I was wondering, I said, I wonder if Jadena has missed his moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know you had to wonder. Do you feel that way a little bit? No, not at all. OK. I'm right on time. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, um. You know, I made an album. It was supposed to come out earlier, mm-hmm. and we had a couple of release dates right. last year. Uh, and in the process of promoting it, I made a second album, and so we decided to merge the two and make a, a better album that we're releasing in February. What, so what was the, the holdup? Just creative, creative process was still going. Or? Nah, nah, nah. It it was uh it was done. I mean, it was I was done with the album. I wrote all these songs like a year ago. Gotcha. Um, and then um. There's various reasons, man. Um, but mainly just in promoting it, I felt like it would be better if I made a more holistic album. So I went back in uh, while we were in Nigeria, actually in South Africa, and then made a better album. What what impact has this uh, current political climate had on your music? Uh, you know, I, I'm not one to be reactive. Everybody's talking about resistance. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, all these reactive words. And to me, what Donald Trump does is he's just... He, he he himself is just a man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what he does is brings up all these uh, wounds and all these uh, things that already existed mm-hmm. in America and in the world. So actually, it's to me, the silver lining is that you can't have a Moses without a Pharaoh. Mm. So I actually like what the state that we're in right now. I, I like, saw I, you at the Women's March. Yeah, representing yeah. Representing nice and early. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm glad. Like things like the Women's March probably would have wouldn't have happened, or not to the same degree, if Hillary Clinton was elected president, right. which is Definitely. ironic, right? Right. Um, but the, those groups of women, it was about 12 to 20, I think, that organized the the march. Like they came out, and uh, and th- those are the kind of things that we're gonna see more. Mm-hmm. We, you know, during the immigration ban, of course, people in the in the um, airports protesting so i i I actually like the reaction that people are having but to your point or to your question it's not it doesn't change me i already have a vision i already i'm always imagining what i want the world to look like Mm. regardless of the president right you know what what do we want our buildings to look like what do we want our schools to look like what do we want our daily life, our clothes, it just culture in general? It can't be just reactive. I'm not going to base my entire life because this bozo clown is the president. Uh, I did put in certain things in the in the album, but I I, I don't I don't make music that's like overtly uh, political all the time mm-hmm. or like quote unquote conscious or have a song called Donald Trump, you know. I have a. Uh, you got hail to the chief. I do. What's I that? Do. What's the, what's it that? ain't to that chief oh, yeah. though. <laughs> it's it's to the the one that I respect, which was the former president, Barack Obama. Um, exactly. Um, who's an amazing, amazing man, man. More amazing than I think we even know. Mm-hmm. You know, I had the the pleasure of sitting with him on a few occasions, um, sitting with him and the first lady and their family. And I think the thing that people don't know is how spiritually grounded they are. Right. You I know. Can see that. It's it's beyond anything like you could imagine. yeah he's on another level man he's I feel, on I feel like we missed a moment with President Obama too because I feel like and I didn't realize that until this current <laughs> right, administration right. came in I'm like yeah, we really was asleep at the wheel for the past eight years like 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 when you say you was having conversations with Barack what the hell was we talking to Barack about like we had an open <laughs> entry into the White House to present <laughs> things yeah we did did we take advantage of that yeah and I don't think to the fullest man. Um, I think that we looked at him being in office as the win, mm-hmm. but in his mind, the win was I'm in office, so now the work begins. It's right. not over, and uh, we got a little comfortable, mm-hmm. man. Uh, and so now we're dealing with this guy. Uh, but it's gonna be an interesting four years, man. I I, I to like say the least. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I if like he makes it four. 
Yeah, do you think he's going to make it? Or? I don't think so. I don't see he's think been he's missing that be so much yeah. in the first, like, month. It's crazy. Yeah, I feel like Michael Flynn was the first domino to drop. Yeah, yeah, that, you know that I mean? was tough. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's a gonna snowball be, effect. I think it's going to be Jordan be. crying <laughs> faces throughout his whole administration in a minute. I mean, you'd rather have Pence, though? Nope. Nah. That's the thing. They got I, Somebody had a theory who was like, they said that Trump... Trump is like the Trojan horse almost, mm-hmm. and it was it's Pence really. That they're gonna try to empower. Yeah, they always had that. You it's know, just they, overthrow everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but uh, that's definitely not the chief that I that I hail to. You know what I'm saying the the former president, but really my father. So the whole album is dedicated to my father, my father, my grandfather. Mm-hmm. Uh, he they were both traditional chiefs. My grandfather had. Uh, he was a dope dude, man. From I, I didn't, I never met him, mm-hmm. but he, uh, in many ways, inspired the life I'm living. He had, he was the first chief in the village to have like a, a, a really a nice little house. You know, if you guys saw it, it probably looked like something out of National Geographic. Mm-hmm. But t- for him, he had cement walls, corrugated zinc roof. He had seven wives. He had a bus- business sell- selling palm wine to the British. Um, who were co- trying to colonize and, you know, of course, take the slaves out of the slave coast, which was Nigeria's nickname. But he fought that by doing business with them and trading palm products. So he was an entrepreneur and he was a skinny, tall, six seven wrestler. Wow. So all around, he was a Don. And uh, that that really influenced me when I saw the picture of him back in the day with like six of his wives. I was like, wow. Influenced you to the point where you can't be faithful to one girl now, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I've been monogamous before. Um, I could definitely be. I can definitely be faithful. Don't disrespect your heritage. Yeah, no, I can be faithful, but I understand uh, polyamory. Yeah. More so than just polygamy, because polygamy, man, that ain't going. What's the that difference? ain't going to fly. Polygamy is when a man has multiple wives. Mm-hmm. Polyamory is a larger word that means many loves, and it means that that it doesn't necessarily mean that the women can't be with other men or women. It's like an open so, relationship, kind of. It's close, yeah. Multiple, uh, open like, relationships people that you care part about, of, yeah, yeah. But it's I not like marriage, polygamy. like, huh? Polygamy would be more my speed. <laughs> yes. Have you ever tried it? Yes. No, I haven't. Yeah. I don't think no. you No. Yeah, it's tough. It. Not yeah. that not, I haven't tried it to the point where they all know about each other. Big love. Yeah. Tried it, you know. Watching Big Love mind, didn't make I me feel like it would be such a great wives. thing for it's not, a man. It's not easy, man. It's not for it's not if for rookies. If you watch Big Love, you're like, mm, it yeah, I, do, like a I, I used to watch that. Yeah, I watched that too. You, so, was your father? Did he have multiple wives too? No, no. He had he had one wife. He had a different life. Yeah, he was uh, he was more traditional in the I guess Christian sense. Mm-hmm. He was a Catholic. Did you talk to him? Did you ever feel like he was missing out? Like pops, <laughs> mom, pops. I definitely talked to him, but he, you know, he was. Uh, he wasn't with that at all. He thought uh, polygamy was like a backwards tradition that we didn't need anymore. See how Western civilization just ruins us? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the Let It Out video. You had like symbol- symbolism of your, I guess, grandfather or father at the table eating dinner? Oh, yeah. That's that's my uncle. Uncle, So okay. Chief, the, the comedian is Chief Obi, and he's, uh, he's really famous in the Nigerian community. So in that video and the whole album, he's actually playing the role of Uncle Palmwine, mm-hmm. who's like this drunken <laughs> uncle that gives you that wisdom, but also like is full of just shit sometimes. He just doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Just it, Nigerians do this a lot. Like Nigerian men will give you these proverbs. Some are beautiful, amazing, and profound, but some are, don't make any sense. Like my pops used to say, <laughs> you can't touch me with a pogo stick. And I'd be like, Why would I? What do you do? You know what a pogo stick is? You don't know. Jump on a pogo stick. But I think he thought it was a pole vault uh, stick. Gotcha. So those kind of things always come through, and and I wanted to make sure that we had a character on the album that represented that that mm-hmm. kind of uncle. So he's in there, um, and that's like the, the the let out video is really that time where you know you leave Thanksgiving or you leave uh, Christmas, and you got your cousins you ain't seen in a minute. You dip out, try to get the car, the nice whip that your uncle or auntie has, and then they give you the other keys to the old Honda Civic mm-hmm. in this case, and then roll out to to the old spots that y'all used to go to. But the let out, you know, the club before, usually the clubs are right, but especially growing up, especially growing up broke, it was always after the club that was that was 
the jump off for me. And gotcha. let's be clear, Jadena does party, okay? Because I see Jadena in all different types of atmospheres. Oh yeah, yeah. I see him. We've seen club. each other. Yeah, few... I see him at day parties. <laughs> I see him. In, I see him all over the place. So now, why do you go to definitely... that? Just to show off your outfits, or you go to like actually soak up the energy and feel the vibe of the people? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that that that's never for the outfits, man. That's mm-hmm. just for it's for good old uh, good old fun for the kids. <laughs> Right. I saw you on Insecure, too. That was a nice cameo that I didn't expect, you know, before I saw that episode. Yeah. Of, of you on Insecure. And I thought yeah. it was an interesting oh, storyline. Oh, yeah. I just forgot about that. I saw that was an interesting storyline that they gave you. Yeah, they did. Uh, Issa Do kinda... women, like, when they date you, automatically try to, like, lock you in and say, that's, you know, so what's good? What's going What's going on from here? What are we doing? I loved it. You smutted out the chicken, then just slid on her. Wow. <laughs> no, but he never <laughs> lied about what yeah, it was. Yeah, I love it. No, he kind of just... lied a little bit. He went along with her. Like, he thought he was doing her a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't really do that. I mean, it's some slick shit. I mean, he, um, he was like the corporate. Issa was like, man, this is like the corporate version of you. Like, if you were really a lawyer... And um, first of all, thank you to her. She's had an amazing year. Absolutely. And she stuck true to a promise that she gave me in college. We went to school together. You and Easton went to school together? Yeah, wow. yeah. I got all this, man. In D.C., right? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. D.C. No, no, no. College, in uh, Stanford, in the Bay. Stanford, okay. So she, we um, we met in college, and I used to make music for her screenplays. She'd be writing, like, I'm writing this movie, I'm writing this TV series. And I would make music, or she had a play. I'd make music for that. That's interesting. I didn't yeah. even know that. Never yeah, knew that. we had all these ideas of what we were gonna do. She moved to New York. She was trying to make it there, then moved back to LA. Um, so we've been friends for a minute. Her and uh, one of her original co-writers, Tracy Oliver, and she always wanted me to act. And I was like, Nah, I'm. You know what I mean? At the time, I was just a rapper. So I was like, Nah, I'm just. I mean, I gotta, I'm gonna do Jay-Z. this rap thing. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna be the next Jay Z slash Nas. I mean, <laughs> and then then I'll then I'll start acting like Pac did. I had all these <laughs> these dreams, and then she said, then when it came true, she actually stuck true to it, and she was just like, "All right, you ready?" And so that was my first real acting gig. I was trying to figure out if I was mad at you for that or not, like what this character <laughs> did, because. She was a little too open too yeah. quickly. And I'm sure that's... She was ready. Yeah, that's hard for a guy to... For a woman to be that way. And then I did feel like you tried to do her a favor by not embarrassing her. Like, you showed up for an event that was important to her to make her look good. Yeah. And it's... To you, that's just what she wanted. You. That's the she, least you can do after you smart her out, Jadena. Right, that's... Which yeah. a lot of guys wouldn't even show up <laughs> yeah. for something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think showing up was cool. But when you're saying that you are somebody's man, that's a... That's, but you that were doing was, that, that was, for her, so she would look good. Yeah, but that's not that's that's a little too much. Right. Yeah, I'm not I'm not with that. <laughs> I, I would I wouldn't do. I'm very blunt. I'm I'm upfront, so I I don't really like that kind of uh, favor. Mm-hmm. You know, because it ends up not being a favor. Right. Yeah, it didn't look like you was acting too much. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look like <laughs> look like you've done that before. <laughs> uh yeah, probably in college. College, I was yeah. running around, yo. It was not that whole polygamy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, let's go back to this Issa Rae thing because I, I find that very interesting. I love people who make their thoughts become things. So yeah. both of y'all knew exactly what y'all wanted Absolutely. to do with your lives from jump. Yeah. Issa was doing the screenwriting. Mm-hmm. You was already doing music. Y'all was helping each other. Yep. Now y'all got this ecosystem where y'all can really uplift each other. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And we got more work that we're doing together. That's um, great. Th- down the line. I don't want to spoil, give a spoiler, but uh, it's really great. I will say that like a lot of the things, that the success that's come in this last year especially was through my school connections, mm-hmm. which See, a lot of people don't talk about. I always say that. I always say, because people say, why is college important? Why does it matter? Yeah. And I always say school is important because there's so many people that you can network with that you meet in school. Yeah. Like, I went to college with my best friend, Santi Gold. She's an yes, artist. Yo, right. Santi, yo, that's... And yeah. that's my best friend, She's but we would have never met each other. If we didn't, like, people that have done stuff for me in marketing yep. and endorsements, like, they, we all went to college together. Exactly. I mean, there's so many... Luke Cage came out of my Stanford Connect. Mike Coulter. Yeah, you know I mean, Cheo, actually. Cheo. Oh, Cheo. Cheo, Cheo yeah. Coca. Cheo, okay, Cheo. Was, yeah. What's Cheo's um, last name? Coca, right? Yep, yeah. yep, Hodari Coca. Um, a lot of, like you said, like all the music platforms, like when I go into a lot of these meetings, there's there's somebody from that went to school. Especially Stanford, I mean. Yeah, especially, <laughs> yeah, now it's like the cool school. Right. Um, 
when I when I first got in, my dad wasn't even excited. He was like, nobody in the village knows Stanford. <laughs> and I was like, all right, thank, thanks. Well, he wants you to go to Harvard? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I always felt like... Yeah, you got to go to Harvard, Yeah, But Stanford Yale, was always like Ivy League, really hard to get yeah, into. Yeah, it was. Like, I mean, it's not like people didn't respect Stanford ever. Yeah. Like, no, people did, level. but he, like, the Nigerian way is like number one, number right. one. But then it became the cool school because mm -hmm. of the Silicon Valley boom. Um, Did your family understand what you were doing? Because I know, like, I have a lot of friends who are Nigerian, and they always talk about how their family wants you to be a lawyer, a yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they don't understand certain no, things about the the entertainment business. No, no, not at all. No, he didn't. He didn't support that initially. Mm -hmm. My family, my siblings did. Right. My mom was like, "Yeah, do whatever you know, whatever makes you happy." But uh, my pops, not at all, not at <laughs> all. But uh, he did say that if I do music, make sure that I'm inventing something new. Mm -hmm. And whatever I do in presentation, my image, just make sure that it's something nobody's ever seen before. So that kind of, that stuck with me. Um, because he was an inventor himself. He made the first African PC, commercially produced African computer. So yeah. that kind of, you know, when your father does that kind of thing. It, <laughs> your dad like the Michael, the Bill Gates of Nigeria? <laughs> yeah, he, he, they called him the Ali of engineers because mm -hmm. he used to talk uh, in the papers about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and how he had a computer with two operating systems and they only had one. <laughs> and he, it was, his computer was faster than theirs. Like, mm -hmm. if we, I look back at all the papers when he passed and I was like, man, this dude was really out there. He had caller ID in Nigeria in the 80s. Wow. We didn't get it in the U.S. till the 90s. Wow, that's you know I mean? Your pops was rich as hell. No, 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 no. Nobody, no, definitely not. We, I didn't come from that. He, I mean, we were, he was decent. We were middle mm -hmm. class in Nigeria, but back then, the people didn't really understand what, like, the use of a PC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he'd meet with the president and the governor, and they'd be sitting there, like, pressing the power button, and it lights okay. up, and they're this? like, yeah, well, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. good job. <laughs> so... We got light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But I will say back to the Stanford, <laughs> and that was it. Well, I, was that your was that your Nigerian accent? I think so I thought so. So weird. Yeah, he, he said we'll watch you in the next, yeah. on the next, <laughs> on the next episode. But I will say, man. Uh, last thing I want to say about the school connection, though, is that um, it really is like, for me, that's the thing I brag about because in in, in high school it was. Uh, it, all the kids that I went to school with didn't want me to, they, they said, you know, you're only going to get into these schools because you black or blah, blah, blah. And so I had to fight for it. I had to fight to get into all these schools. Guidance counselors said, you, you, you're you not going to go to the Stanford. You're not going to go to all these schools. So pushing through that. And then now at this point, having all these connections, um, the rooms that I'm in, basically off of like one song, mm -hmm. Classic Man, for the last two years, it's partially just because of the school connect. Yoga. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I, I and yoga that. too. I love that for a number of reasons, man, because I feel like, you know, when we talk about uh, quote-unquote privilege yeah, yeah. in America, like like the whole basis of white privilege is based off a of system. Yeah. So for black people, you know, we, we have to create our own systems. You right. know what I'm saying? When you create your own systems, you create your own privilege. So yeah, I just yeah. love the fact that y'all had that connection and y'all had that ecosystem in school and y'all continue it once y'all get out of school. Absolutely. And I, I, for me... That talk, talking about that whole ecosystem. That's why the album's called The Chief. On The Chief, there's there's all these stories, trials and tribulations of me kind of discovering myself as a man, what it means for me to be a man, what it means for me to be a chief in the modern day. And you'll see though that in the middle of it, it's still like a it's an African diasporic story. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you'll you'll have the Chief Obi's the uncle that kind of takes you through the album. And he's that first. He's that that for a first generation immigrant, you'll relate to that that uncle with the thick accent, kind of telling you the ways of the world. And but also because I grew up in hoods that were Caribbean American and African American, I have that sound and that and that that flavor added to the pot. Mm -hmm. And that whole mixture on the album on the chief, to me, I hope empowers us to to think about more about the ecosystem because mm -hmm. one thing that we don't do is we always think that we have to do it alone like all right if we get our communities together if we go out and vote mm -hmm. it's all these same damn stories i heard my whole life and not and that they ain't gonna work nope you nobody does that in nope. america nobody does that with just your community mm -hmm. or just your household or just voting or asking the government for this and that right. man that's something like i don't that's not how i move and i'll never i'll never tell a kid that 
it never and all these community organizers and so-called uh, uh, black leaders preaching that that's just like that, that's just because they want to they want to you know they want some shine and so they they yeah. use they they recycle all the old jargon the way you do it is you have to have another country or in black people's uh, uh, circumstance and Latinos as well there's actually entire continents mm-hmm. that you have at your disposal and you have to create that that economy mm-hmm. around you Everybody does it. That's that's what every other group does, including what you just look at white people. What do you, where do you think white people came from in this country? Europe. Europe. <laughs> so that's the only way to do it. So for me, the chief in a, in a large uh, a part of it to me, besides being my story, it is to kind of embolden us as as a people to think beyond just our, our narrow views. Absolutely. And what's good about it too, I think, is that for people who also have grown up in that culture, Nigerians, they can relate to the album, but for everybody else, it also is educational as far as cultural things. Absolutely. For, you know, something that's outside of our culture. Absolutely. I mean, most things that... <laughs> Most people here are not from here uh, well, all two, immigrants. 300 years ago. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm absolutely. saying? It's either by force yeah. or mm-hmm. it, it was by uh, we're re- running from something. I mean, even the, the so-called forefathers of this country were running mm-hmm. from Great Britain. You know, once they decided, nah, we're not going to deal with that crown no more. So it's, uh, it's, just, it's always ironic uh, when the president talks about it, uh, immigrants in the way that he does. His own wife. Yeah, his own wife. <laughs> They said she's miserable now. I heard that. I'm sure you and uh, Yvonne Orji wow. had an ill connection. Yeah, we did. Um, <laughs> she's from Ni- she's from Nigeria, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, she's hilarious. Yeah, she is hilarious, and it was hilarious that she came on the show and uh, <laughs> and talked about the the uh, lack of orgies that she had yeah, actually she's a virgin. with yeah. with that last name. Um, you looking like that's you looking like huh? Yeah, right. No, nah, I believe her. Oh, okay. There's a lot of actually, there's a lot of Nigerian women that that have that same story. Virtuous. I mean, yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's a super <laughs> religious country. Gotcha. So and, and that the the parents will really drill that into you. Right. So who was y'all so having sex with? They drill it into you not to get it drilled into you. I mean, y'all was young. Or y'all wasn't. I mean, who's? It's not y'all. I mean, it's some of these women. I'm. I'm I was not that's following what, that path. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh yeah, you. There, I had like, to kind of. Well, luckily I was in Caribbean neighborhoods, so. Got you. It was a little. Yeah, it was. Down. It was a little different. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you in the game playing in these Halloween costumes? <laughs> y'all no, we didn't play each other. Like, I'm gonna be you this year. You be me. <laughs> if we can, yeah, nah. <laughs> No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't plan it, but I, I, you know, what's interesting. The first, the first year when he dresses me, mm-hmm. I was in a Halloween costume store mm-hmm. looking for a bodysuit, so that I was like, because I'm gonna be the game this year. Gotcha. Then he beat me to the punch. I saw it on my phone. I was like, damn, he already got. It. I couldn't find the bodysuit, and that was that. So I did it the next year. Do you like seeing people dressed up as Jadena? Because there were a few Jadenas right I mean, around yeah, for Halloween. That has to be flat. Uh, you know you made it when you were Halloween costume. It's there. That's what that's what my friend, my homie, uh, <laughs> definitely texted me that. I mean, it was it's you know it's funny. It's great. Well, Jadena's album, The Chief, is out today. They said you have a lot more things to do, so yeah. I just got a text that you have to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently, I do. I see everybody rumbling. Yeah. And papers shuffling. But yeah, no. The the album, The Chief, is out. Uh, I'm excited it's out everywhere, iTunes, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm just, I'm excited because the way I look at it, if it, we always talk about, and I, we all, as, as artists and so-called celebrities, we always have to do these things for politicians, like mm-hmm. go out and vote, go out and vote. I wish politicians did a campaign for us as artists <laughs> because if you, when you buy an album, mm-hmm. you, you know really mean? want Trump telling people to buy your album? Not, uh, you well, actually, it? yeah, he should tell you. I will, I'll take <laughs> that. I'll take that, man. That's half the country. I'll take that in a second. Would I perform for if, if Trump? He, I wouldn't perform for Trump, but I'd perform in his face. You know what I'm saying? I would definitely, I would love to see him front row at a concert. You performed right. at the inauguration? Uh, would I perform the the nah, probably not, man. But that because that's his event. Yeah, I yeah, want him yeah. to come to my event. Yeah. I mean that's like, like how that, Mike Pence did at we'll Hamilton. See, we'll kinda. see. <laughs> yeah. Got you. Hamilton, exactly. Yeah, they got yeah. him. That was dope. Yeah. They got him right yeah. there. <laughs> exactly. But I mean to me, if you if you when you buy this album and when you stream it, it's you're changing society. Mm-hmm. When you if you if you if you're listening to a certain kind of music and you, it, it's in a loop, and you, you wonder why your neighborhood still look the same. Right. That's because you, you, you're living in that. Like, music's 
important, man. It's to me the highest art. Yes. So the when universal you, language. Yeah, it also. is. So to me, when you're when you're streaming the cheap and you're you're buying into this, you're actually buying into a new life. For me, you're buying into a new lifestyle. Mm. That's what the chief is about. All right. So you're What'd raising you people's level of consciousness. Uh, yes, we're levitating people and and raising them up. <laughs> I mean, I, to me, it's just a jamming ass album. So uh -huh. I hope people like it. My right. man Jadena, his album's in stores right now. Thank you for coming, my brother. All right, thank you. Do people say in stores still, or they say available now? <laughs> yeah, available now. You're right. Platforms. You're right. Available <laughs> now. In the stores. <laughs> on all platforms. <laughs> man, that's real. <laughs> it's, it's the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, every weekday morning. Tune in.